Hello everyone. Welcome to my digital art journaling flip through. My name is Rachel Haran and I am a Photoshop tutorial writer at Crafty Button Designs. This art journal flip through is a roundup of all the techniques we've covered so far. If you've watched my videos, you already know I generally play background music while you watch me create an art journal, but this is different. Today I will talk through the process and the techniques that were used to create each of these pages. All of the information covered I'm showing you you can find at craftybuttondesigns.com in the tutorial section of the blog. However, I will have links to each blog post in the description box below this video on YouTube. Technique number one was all about blending papers together using your brushes. And the page on the left, I use the painted circle brush file. And to be able to achieve the effect that I got, I placed the purple paper as my background layer. Then I placed the yellow paper on top, and the yellow paper will completely cover the purple paper. So next I added a layers mask and the purpose of a layers mask is to show or hide parts of a project. But a layers mask is awesome because it gives you absolute control of what you're hiding or what you're revealing. And so once I targeted the mask, I created a new layer and chose the circle brush file and began stamping down to reveal the purple paper. So as I reveal the purple paper, it also takes on the shape of the circles. The page on the right is the exact same technique but I used a sponge shaped brush file to get a messier look. So you can see depending on the brush file that you end up using you can really get some varied looks with very little effort. And also if you work on physical art journals you can do some of these same techniques by using a jelly plate, some acrylic paint and any texture shapes that you have available. Technique number two was all about tearing book pages using the lasso tool. This is such a quick and easy technique that it doesn't require any additional tools. You lay down your text paper and with your lasso tool, which essentially it's just a cutting tool, then you begin to start to outline jagged areas and what you're doing is forming your tears. So then after each tear in your page, you will hide the visibility of that particular layer and you do that until all all your cuts have been made. And once you've made all your cuts, then you can begin to reposition the tears on your page and expose each layer's visibility. When you work in a physical art journal, this is probably the most basic technique for adding different pages or collage sheets, different colors, different textures of pages, and it's really quick to just take two pieces of sheets in your hand and just tear them. Technique number three was all about creating stencils using pattern paper. I love stencils. They are a hot trend right now and they come in so many shapes and sizes and with a little spritz of color they instantly transform your project. So I selected a paper with a circle pattern and essentially I copied the pattern onto its own layer. It's sort of like stripping the pattern from the paper and once I got the basic shape I could now use it just like you would a stencil. Just like with stencils you can use the outline or the mask. I did the same thing here to get both the circle shape and the diamond shape and I love it when I get double duty out of one product. Now if you work on a physical art journal stencils are probably a must-have in your stash as well. You can use your spray mist, modeling paste, pan pastels, acrylic paints, gel medium, so many different things you can use on stencils to create different effects. Technique number four was all about using your spray mist just as if you are using a bottle. However, you're doing it in Photoshop. This is a super fabulous technique to try digitally. The beauty of this technique is that Photoshop will actually mimic a spray nozzle and allows you to spritz color onto your canvas, which mimics the same level of randomness that you get when you're using a spray mister. And you can even mix two colors together. 
and Photoshop will take those two colors for example if you put a red color and a yellow color in e either your foreground or background color palette Photoshop will take those two colors and when they meet on the page it will blend those colors so you will probably see an orange hue from the red and the yellow colors mixed together it is really easy and you get superb results now I will say that it is a technique you can only do using the full version of Photoshop and the reason being is that there are more advanced options and controls when you're using the brush tool preset in the full version of Photoshop if you work on a physical art journal, you probably have a few spray mist bottles. There are tons of manufacturers that provide stunning colors, and as you grow your collection, you can begin to mix and match colors. You can also probably make your own colors if you use about two-thirds part water and one-third part acrylic paint and mix those really well together. Whatever your choice in spray misting, it's it's really an inexpensive option and delicious delivers instant results. Technique number five was all about loading your paint bucket with something other than paint. I mean the paint bucket tool is pretty simple. Its basic purpose is to fill whatever object you choose with color. However, the paint bucket tool also allows you to fill it with patterns. Patterns, that's right. This means that you can take your plaids, your shapes, your grunge, almost any pattern you have and fill it fill the paint bucket with it. So I ended up using glittered pattern paper and I chose red, yellow, green, and black. And the end result was that I ended up creating my own glitter alpha stickers. Thanks for joining me on this art journal flip through. You can find all the links to the blog posts with the written instructions to download at the bottom of this YouTube video. Please also remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Bye.